Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjali Ammal Mahalik Engineering College, Koyil Bandi. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture on the subject Air Compressor, which is coming under Thermal Engineering 1 for 4th semester Mechanical Engineering. In the first lecture, the topic to be covered, classification of air compressor, working of single stage compressor and work done without clearance volume for different types of compression. The learning outcome to the students at the end of the lecture, the students will be able to explain the working of reciprocating compressor. Estimate the work done on a compressor, single stage compressor without clearance volume. A compressor, air compressor is a machine, takes in atmospheric air, compresses and delivers at a high pressure. The compressor is driven by an electrical motor or internal combustion engine. A device, a mechanical device which is used for compressing the air, atmospheric air for external use, raising the pressure of the atmospheric air and delivering to the external use is called as air compressor. And the air compressor is driven by, majority of the cases, it is driven by an electrical motor. So the air compressor, the low pressure atmospheric air is taken inside and the high pressure compressed air is leaving the air compressor and it is driven by a prime mover. The prime mover is electrical motor or an internal compression engine. They are connected by a coupling. And this is how the air is getting compressed. There are two different strokes, suction stroke and delivery stroke. So during the suction stroke, so you look at the diagram, we have the suction valve, suction pipeline, and we have the connecting rod, piston, and then the crank which is rotating, and you have a delivery valve and delivery pipeline or discharge pipeline. So the piston is reciprocating by the action of the connecting rod and crank, the piston is reciprocating inside the cylinder. During the suction stroke, the suction valve opens, the atmospheric air is drawn inside, and uh, it is compressed during the compressor stroke, it is compressed and when the pressure is higher than the delivery side, the delivery valve open and it is getting delivered. And normally in the reciprocating compressor, the supply of air is intermittent for every revolution, for every revolution of the crankshaft, the alternatively there will be suction and compression taking place and the discharge of the air is intermittent. So normally in the air compressor, the compressed air is stored in a storage tank and then it is used because for any application we require continuous supply of air. So the, the, store, the air is stored in a tank and then the stored air at a higher pressure is used for the external use. And this is another diagram, animative, animated diagram for the working of reciprocating compressor. So here we have valve and here there is no valve, we have diaphragm type of valve. Normally in the air compressor, we have only diaphragm type of valve. And the use of compressed air, you can list, there are number of uses. So few, list, few uses are mentioned here for operating small pneumatic hand tool. Using the compressed air, we can use some of the tool, operating drill and hammer in the road building to fill the automobile tire for operating brakes in the buses and the truck, air brake. So highly compressed air is used for applying the brake. Melting furnace, we require compressed air for uh, heating and uh, produce hot environment inside the melting furnace. For operation of lift and the pneumatic conveyor. So lift operator is also done by pneumatically using the compressed air for starting internal combustion engine. So this was earlier application, very long, long back, earlier days, we require compressed air for starting the engine. So paint spraying and tunneling. So tunneling is creating tunnel. By using the compressed air, we can create the tunnel and the paint spraying, it is a common application. So these are the some of the uses of the compressed 
air. And the classification of the air compressor. So the air compressor, there are classified under three headings. According to the working, this may be reciprocating compressor or rotary compressor. According to the action, this may be single acting or double acting compressor. According to the number of stage, it, will, it may be single stage or the multi-stage compressor. So reciprocating action, what we have seen earlier, uh, uh, we, that is what reciprocating action. And rotary compressor, we will discuss later in the uh, subject. So there are different types of rotary compressor. And then acting, single acting, double acting. So in the single acting reciprocating compressor, the air, the piston will be on one side of the cylinder. Whereas in the double acting, uh, there will be two pistons acting in a single cylinder so that there will be continuous supply of air. So for every revolution, there will be continuous supply of air. That is what double acting compressor. And number of stages, if you have only one piston cylinder arrangement, then it is called a single stage. When you have more than one, that is called as multi-stage. So normally for a higher pressure rise, we are using the multi-stage. Single stage is used for lower pressure rise. For a higher pressure rise, we are using the multi-stage reciprocating compressor. And uh, we will discuss the working principle of single stage reciprocating compressor without clearance volume. So what does it mean without clearance volume? So the piston will reciprocate to the entire volume of the cylinder. So the piston, the top of the piston will touch the top of the cylinder head. That is what there is no clearance volume. And accordingly the valve position are changed. So the inlet value is on the left side, outlet valve or delivery valve will be on the other side. There are two strokes and one revolution of the crankshaft. So suction stroke and the delivery stroke. So during the suction stroke, the piston is reciprocating. So piston is moving downward. So when the piston is moving downward, the vacuum is created. So the pressure inside the cylinder is decreasing. So automatically the delivery valve is closed. At one point of time, the pressure here is lower than the atmospheric pressure. So when the pressure inside the cylinder is lower than the atmospheric pressure, the inlet valve will be open. Remember, the, there is no valve actuating mechanism in the case of reciprocating compressor. The valves are opened and closed by means of pressure difference. So here, when they do the suction stroke, when the piston is moving downward, vacuum is created. The vacuum pressure is lower than the atmospheric pressure. Because of the lower pressure, the valve open and the atmospheric air is drawn inside. When the piston is at the bottom dead center, bottom most position, the air is the air is completely filled inside the cylinder. Then during the next stroke, delivery stroke, the piston is moving up. So when the piston is moving in the upward direction, the air is compressed because at one point the pressure of the air is increasing. At one point, the pressure will be more here so that the inlet valve will be closed because it will be more than the atmospheric pressure. So the inlet valve will be closed. When the piston is further moving in the upward direction, the air pressure inside the cylinder is more than the air pressure on the delivery side so that this valve will open. The delivery valve will open and the compressed air will go to the delivery tank. So the valve, inlet valve and the exhaust valve, delivery valve, they are opening and closing by means of pressure difference. They are called as diaphragm type of valve. And there are three different types of compression. So the compression may be done isothermally, adiabatically, and polytropically. So we will discuss the work done uh, for all the three types of compression and we will compare. So I compare the isothermal, adiabatic, and the polytropic compression processes. So work done without clearance volume, isothermal compression. So the so the working of the piston cylinder arrangement is already, already uh, discussed. So if there are two strokes. So suction stroke A to 1 is the suction stroke, 1 to 2 is compression. So where they follow, it follow, the line follows the law, PV equal to constant and 2 to B is the delivery. So the piston actually, this is the delivery stroke. So up to this point, it is compressed. At the point 2, the pressure inside the cylinder is more than the delivery side. So the delivery will open and the air is delivered. Now work done for isothermal compression process, the entire the PV diagram, area of the PV diagram that indicates the work done. How to calculate the area of the PV diagram? A, 1, 2, B, that is the area. So the work done during the isothermal compression is area A, 1, 2, B. And A, 1, 2, B equal to area O, B, 2, C. Look at here, O, B, 2, C. Area O, B, 2, C. It is a rectangle. 
then area c 2 1 d the area and the curve pv equal to constant then minus we have to subtract this area area oa 1 d oa 1 d so this area of this rectangle area and this curve minus area of the bottom rectangle area of this rectangle so what is the pressure here what is the pressure here p2 what is the volume v2 so the area of this first rectangle is p2 v2 area under the curve is p1 v1 logarithmic of p2 by p1 so the work done for isothermal process already we discussed in the thermodynamics so we calculated the work done this is p1 v1 logarithmic of p2 by p1 and the work done of the area of the bottom rectangle is minus p1 v1 so for isothermal process we have pv equal to constant so p1 v1 equal to p2 v2 that is getting cancelled so finally we have p1 v1 logarithmic of p2 by p1 which is equal to mr t1 into logarithmic of p2 by p1 that is the work done for isothermal process then adiabatic compression now the compression follows the law pv to the power gamma equal to constant working principle remains the same so the we have two strokes first stroke a to 1 suction stroke and two from one it uh, delivery starts compression starts so it is compressed for up to 2 it is compressed and 2 to b it is delivery now the work done for adiabatic compression w equal to once again area a1 2b which is area ob 2c minus plus area c2 1d minus area oa 1d now first rectangle as usual p2 v2 last rectangle last rectangle is p1 v1 minus p1 v1 now for the work done for adiabatic process p2 v2 minus p1 v1 divided by gamma minus 1 and this equation also we have derived in thermodynamics refer to the thermodynamics notes so there we derived the work done for the adiabatic process now we take common denominator common gamma minus 1 is the common denominator so multiplying gamma minus 1 into p2 v2 minus p1 v1 we combine the first term and the last term plus p2 v2 minus p1 v1 so in the new denominator there is no change the numerator is getting simplified so gamma minus 1 we say expand and we will simplify gamma into p2 v2 minus p1 v1 divided by gamma minus 1 this is the work done for the adiabatic process so further we process the equation and we will make the equation simplified Uh, which we can use it for problem solving and we have the equation we repeat w equal to gamma into p2 v2 minus p1 v1 divided by gamma minus 1 which is w into gamma by gamma minus 1 we take p1 v1 outside so p1 v1 into p2 v2 divided by p1 v1 minus 1 now we have for adiabatic process p1 v1 to the power gamma equal to p2 v2 to the power gamma so v2 by v1 equal to p1 by p2 to the power 1 by gamma now we substitute this v2 by v1 in the work done equation so w equals to becomes gamma by gamma minus 1 p1 v1 into p2 by p1 into p1 by p2 to the power 1 by gamma now we have to change the sign so we take p2 by p1 so we change the direction so this become p2 by p1 to the power 1 minus 1 by gamma minus 1 so the value here gamma by gamma minus 1 p1 v1 into p2 by p1 to the power 1 by 1 minus 1 minus 1 by gamma minus 1 so for adiabatic compression process final expression w equal to gamma minus 1 gamma by gamma minus 1 p1 v1 into p2 by p1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1 and this p1 v1 equal to mr t1 so this is gamma by gamma minus 1 mr t1 into p2 by p1 to the power gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1 so this is the work done for adiabatic compression process then polytropic compression process so the again we take the diagram now the instead of pv to the power gamma equal to constant now the equation is changed pv to the power n equal to constant and the working principle everything is similar a to 1 is the suction process 1 to 2 is polytropic compression process and 2 to b is the delivery process now work done during the polytropic compression w equal to area a1 to b and which is as usual in the previous two discussions area ob 2c that is the rectangle delivery side rectangle plus area c 21d area under the curve pv to the power n equal to constant minus area oa 1d so substituting 
it is very much similar to the adiabatic compression but the gamma is replaced by n so the first rectangle p2 v2 the last rectangle p uh, p1 v1 and the area under the curve p2 v2 minus p1 v1 divided by n minus 1 so okay taking common denominator n minus 1 n minus 1 into p2 v2 minus p1 v1 plus p2 v2 minus p1 v1 divided by n minus 1 so simplifying w equal to n into p2 v2 minus p1 v1 divided by n minus 1 we further simplify the equation so now w equal to we repeat we w equal to n by n minus 1 p2 v2 minus p1 v1 which is we take p1 v1 outside so n by n minus 1 p1 v1 into p2 v2 by p1 v1 minus 1 now we have p1 v1 to the power n equal to p2 v2 to the power n for the polytropic process so v2 by v1 equal to p1 by p2 to the power 1 by n now we have to substitute this equation in the vector equation. So n by n minus 1, p1 v1, p2 by p1 into p1 by p2 to the power 1 by n minus 1. So we change the direction and the, the sign, the power sign will change. So w work done equal to n by n minus 1, p1 v1 into p2 by p1 to the power 1 minus 1 by n minus 1. So the final e expression for work done, w equal to n by n minus 1, p1 v1 into p2 by p1 to the power n minus 1 by n minus 1 and we know the p1 v1 equal to mrt1 so the work done is also equal to n by n minus 1 mrt1 into p2 by p1 to the power n minus 1 by n minus 1. Now we have three different equations for calculating the work done of the compression isothermal compression, adiabatic compression and uh, polytropic compression. Uh, we will discuss further about all these compression process in the next lecture. Now we have a reflection spot. So based on your observation for the past 15 minutes, you try to answer this question. The work output to air compressor is minimum if the compression follows the law. P u to the power 1.25 equal to constant, P v equal to constant, P u to the power gamma equal to constant, P u to the power 1.3 equal to constant based on your observation. So if your answer is PV, to PV equal to constant, you are correct. So the work done will be minimum in the case of isothermal compression process. We have another question. Isothermal compression, a reciprocity compressor is possible when the compressor is running at very low speed, very high speed, low speed during suction and high speed during delivery, any speed. So your answer, you select the correct answer. So if you have selected very low speed, you are correct. For isothermal compression process, the piston has to reciprocate very, very slowly, which is practically not possible. So the compressor is has to deliver the air uh, quickly. So very low speed is not possible. That is why isothermal compression is not practically used. Work input, uh, work input to the reciprocity compressor, air compressor with the N as an index of compression increases with the increase in the value of N, decreases with the increase in the value of N, remains constant with the N, none of the above. So work input, work input will, what will happen to the work input when the value of N is increasing, decreasing and remain constant. So the work input is increasing with the value of n. So n equal to 1.25, 1.3 or 1.4 when the n value is changing, uh, when n the value is increasing, the work input to the compressor is increasing. We stop here. So these are all the books I have written in mechanical engineering subject and I upload the video lectures on the YouTube channel. You subscribe the channel, use the videos for your better learning and pass in the examination. So thank you very much. We'll meet again in another video lecture. We continue with the lecture in the air compressor in the next video.